it's Laura Eubanks of Design for Serenity with your grand reveal in Tustin Phase 3. Six days, huge crew, tons of materials and plants from Desert Theater, from Brandon Bullard in Desert Theater have created an, a an literal oasis here in Tustin. It was so rewarding to work with these plants that I don't generally get a chance to work with. Take a look here at our pride and joy, our Draco, uh, Dracaena Draco. This was from Brandon Bullard. Uh, this, this area here used to be home to a carrot wood tree and it was very messy and it dropped leaves and pods into the pool. There was a lawn that was very difficult to keep growing in this area. And we have just completely transformed it with the use of specimen cacti and euphorbia from Brandon. We have a couple of agave in this bed, but uh, prim primarily cactus. Note the 3 8 inch, was it desert gold, Greg? Desert gold. California gold. Or California gold. And then we took um, some rubble. This was actually at the bottom of the rubble basket, just kind of the chips. And we tossed it in through here for a really natural desert look. Remember also when you are doing your um, installations, especially with big, beautiful specimen plants like this Dracaena Draco, that you remember your uplighting. This garden is absolutely beautiful illuminated. Now this is a bed that is not going to require any additional water. Yes, there is drip to the Draco. There's drip to the, to the Euphorbia antisyphilitica and to the agaves, but the cactus are on their own. And what absolutely set this area of the garden off was the client, client has a wonderful collection of Talavera. Look at this Don Quixote. Isn't that magnificent? This area of the garden was home to, uh, wasn't, it wasn't really part of the installation. We worked a pathway in through this area and created a planting mound here of cactus, primarily all from Waterwise Botanicals. These are Tom Jesh's uh, little Apuntias, and they bloom in the most magnificent colors. We've companioned these Apuntias with other Faro cactus and mammillarias from Brandon Bullard in Desert Theater. Uh, remember to restraint, restraint, restraint. When you're planting cactus, this is not a tapestry. You don't want to pull the plants too close together. You want to be sure that each plant has the opportunity to be showcased all by itself. So leave some space between your cactus. Showstopper in here too, another Talavera piece, another Don Quixote. Just add so much whimsy and personality to this installation. Our client John is building a pergola right here and the footings kind of stuck out into our pathway. So I wanted to mitigate the possibility of someone tripping as they walked through the garden. So we staged this wonderful old rustic pot with this Bacarnia recurvata. Remember, the little things in a garden can make all the difference too. Just staging this simple understated pot and plant takes this installation to the next level and provides safety as well. Here in the main area of the garden, we brought in 20 plus yards of soil to create some serious mounding. We really, really did not want this to be flat. So we got the mounding going first, then we brought in about 10 ton of uh, boulder and got all of those staged. We've got some spectacular uplighting in this garden and we edged with rubble. Rather than, you know, the plastic bordering, we used a more natural rock edging and brought in that 3 8 inch pebble again. Now there is some irrigation in this garden for the plants that needed it, like the Faquaria and the aloes, but the cactus are on their own. It's not that you can't irrigate cactus. We just didn't want to run the risk of potential rot and we didn't want to expedite their growth. It's really not important to us that these get bigger. We'd be perfectly content if the garden stayed like this until the end of time.
This was, uh, you know, as I've told you, a little bit of a deviation for me. I usually work with a lot of softer plants. I don't get a chance to do the, you know, this was the first real cactus diorama, uh, which is the, the, the term that the client coined for this installation, a diorama, that I've ever done. And I was so excited about it. I, you know, once I got the plants though, it was like falling off a log and it just flowed. Remember, allow some space and vary your textures. These blue um, spire cactus are so spectacular and lend such an interesting color to the garden. Deborah Lee Baldwin is the one who talked about calling cactus halo plants because when the sun hits them, they are absolutely haloed with light and are spectacularly beautiful. This is a specimen garden, but I still want people to feel compelled to come inside. So I did create three pathways through the installation so that people could get up close and personal with the plants. We pulled in some beautiful driftwood pieces from seafoam driftwood or driftwood larry as I like to call them. And we've got some really cool talavera staged in this part, part, part of the garden as well. I've mentioned to you before how much I like this Euphorbia anti-syphilitica as a companion to cactus. I don't know what it is about it, but there's something about the texture of this plant that just looks so beautiful with the Apuntia and with other cactus. So look for Euphorbia anti-syphilitica to companion in your cactus gardens. The agave ovatifolia, this was a 24 inch box specimen from Waterwise Botanicals. It's the, one of the client's favorite plants. It is absolutely spectacular. So we tipped that plant to really showcase it to its maximum potential. These three spire cactus are um, actually called Pringlii. These will grow to be 20 or 30 feet tall. So if you are pulling in some big columnar cactus, make sure that you don't have overhead wires or other or eaves or other potential problems that you're gonna face down the road. This is uh, actually a plant that I pulled from Waterwise Botanicals. It was a one-off, meaning that there was only one and I asked Jeff Moore, I asked some other knowledgeable people, I asked Tom Jesh, nobody knows who the baby daddy is on this one. It's a Hercules crossed with we're not sure what. So we had to have it for this garden. So are you on a budget? You don't need a lot of money always to make a really beautiful succulent garden. We worked with this great big beautiful palm tree, pulled in a fountain, planted up the fountain, staged a couple adorable talavera pieces, ran a little bit of rock ribbon through to anchor it all together, and also left this blue festuca grass. This was here before, but in this bed was a lot of wood mulch, and it was just, you know, kind of a nothing burger. But I, this is not a succulent, but I really like this grass, you know? And sometimes if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So here we have a beautiful installation for, you know, just a, just, just a few plants, really, and a little bit of rock made this look clean and intentional. We had a king palm tree here that was pouting. Pouting is what I call it when a plant doesn't die, but it refuses to thrive. It looked so sad. So John, our client, cut the palm tree off, left some trunk, we drilled or cored it out about this far and planted up the stump. This makes a really, really cute and interesting planter if you've got some old palm trees or palm stumps that you'd like to, uh, to do something decorative with, just plant them up. As many of you know, this journey in Tustin began about two and a half years ago with what we affectionately refer to as phase one. 
This was a grass area that we converted into a succulent garden or a tapestry. So you'll note, after a couple of years, the plants that we installed have just knit together beautifully, which is what I tell you in a tapestry, it's important to really press your plants close together so that they can continue to knit and create a, a look that is very, very mosaic. This, this irrigation is all drip. And short of just some grooming and a little bit of weeding, this installation has been very sustainable for John and Ross. This aloe Hercules threw off a branch or another head and almost toppled over. So we made the executive decision to limit up and just allow it to grow as you know a single trunk right now to maintain the conformation and to keep it balanced. Look at this stand of Echeveria imbricata. Oh, isn't that so gorgeous? Our homeowner Roz is the queen of the Echeveria. All of the Echeverias in her garden just go and go and go, year in and year out. Um, she never loses a single one and they just continue to thrive. Look at this, look at this. Have you ever seen such an enormous Echeveria? I know I haven't. Look at the size of this plant. Scale here, are you getting, not that it has scale, but four scale, getting a sense of how big is this? This is like three times the size of my head. It's gorgeous and huge. Um, we also cut some of the branches off of the, of the Aluaudia procera. It was just kind of going crazy. Um, you'll note that it's got some yellow leaves on it. This is not a big deal. Sometimes this happens if it gets cold. Sometimes this happens if the plant gets a little bit water stressed. Um, we'll throw some water on it and it'll just leaf right back out. No problem. Here's the little cactus garden that I put in two and a half years ago. This is a little xeriscape area. We do have water going to the little Mediterranean fan palm, but all of the rest of these plants are on their own. And you can kind of get a sense of how these cactus have grown. They were about woe big two and a half years ago. So they've all about tripled in size. So this kind of gives you an idea of how you need to give cactus some room to grow. Our Mediopicta alba, Agave Mediopicta, has quad or tripled in size, I would say. This is one of my favorite smaller agaves for the garden. It just looks wonderful here amongst the Hesperallo, a barrel cactus, and some columnular cactus, Pacopodium lamerii. And you know me, mom and her barrels. What is it about barrel cactus that just anchor a garden in place? We've also got little Agave Victoria regionase scattered throughout this space. Just spectacular. Just aeoniums, 
um, the showpiece in this area is the olive tree. We didn't want to compete with that. But take a look at the Talavera in this area. to accommodate the tree you know we didn't add soil we worked with the topography we didn't want to want to distress or suffocate any roots so I did not add any soil and we left the irrigation you can see here these are on these risers this is sprayed so there you have it succulents can thrive with spray as well as with drip irrigation This little corner of the garden, we also um, reworked as part of our phase three, because when you walk up the driveway, this is a really, really important spot that people see immediately. So we staged uh, the Cochina, the Katrina, yeah, the Katrina Talavera. This is our client's pride and joy. She is the most beautiful piece. We've actually installed some rebar and um, ran the rebar up under her skirt is rather PG-13 so we didn't want to we didn't want to show you the uh, the interworkings of that but she's not going anywhere and then I just you know I staged you know a, an aloe speciosa in the back and you know a little quiche con and another pharaoh cactus we've got a, a dracaena another dracaena draco right here I pulled in a little piece of driftwood you know stage some boulder again it's all about the mounds this is really really elevated and it's just elegant in its simplicity now who doesn't have a two foot wide flower bed along their driveway you know I mean don't we all succulents are the answer we chose some pretty simple low profile plants um, used some mini rubble mini boulder to kind of break up the break up the design um, and just wove these plants in throughout the entire space over here at the corner of the drive we decided on a peruvianus a fence post cactus and check out this mangave kaleidoscope this is just such a great little presentation isn't it so simple we've got three things and a little bit of black uh, running through it. Uh, it just looks completely and utterly finished. I get a lot of questions when an Ionium is starting to drop some leaves and you panic. Um, don't worry about it. You know, this is just natural deciduation when the plant starts to drop leaves from underneath. What I always tell you is look at what's happening in the center. Look at the new growth. Does it look healthy? And it absolutely does. See, there's no evidence of bugs or disease or discoloration in that head. So I know that anything that's happening with these under leaves is nothing to be concerned about. Now this is phase two. This um, front yard installation has been in for about a year, a little over a year. But this section, this raised bed planter, our client was so inspired by what we did in phase one that she planted this out herself. And it is spectacular, let me tell you. Take a look at this cactus, all in full bloom. 
don't be afraid to mix your mediums. Mix your cactus and your succulents. If you're brave, it can be very, very dramatic. And look at this little Crassula spring bouquet. This is a really hard plant for me to keep going and it sure is thriving here in Tustin. Look at this agave. You know, this is gonna have to probably be taken out of here pretty soon. But look at this little Echeveria underneath. Isn't that a hoot? And the Ruchia. This is another favorite one of mine. It's leathery, it's tough, it's the greatest ground cover in the world, but I have mixed success with it. Some places I planted it thrives, like here in Tustin, and other places it dies within weeks of planting, which is so unfortunate because this is such a great tough plant. Now this top bed here was something that we did pretty much with leftover plants in phase two a year ago. I basically have uh, Crassula undulata, Crassula ovata, Portolacaria as a spiller, and some Crassula argentea, sunset jade, and then some sunburst aeonium. And it just looks absolutely magnificent. And you can't beat the bloom of a Hesperallo. Look at them up here. Woo! Like the 4th of July. Many of you ask about the Daimondia. Remember we staged a little Daimondia here under the uh, aloe um, Hercules? And you can see that it's doing great. It died back a little bit in the hottest part of the summer but made a major comeback as soon as the temperatures cooled down. These Mangave Jaguars went in a year ago like this. I mean, they have more than tripled in size. And as you can see, some of them are throwing off bloom spikes. So it'll be interesting to see what kind of dieback we get. I also underplanted these with some, with some Crassula. Um, that looks really, really good too. Just kind of sneaking, sneaking its head out through the leaves of that plant. I chose it for similarity in texture and color. Look at this Aeonium Silk. This is Aeonium Silk. This is Aeonium Zwartkopf. And when you have them right next to each other, you can really see the difference. Silk is very, very compact and tight. I love this Aeonium. The Zwartkopf is an arboretum. It grows on a trunk and it's a, um, darker in color. down a stabilized decomposed granite and once it gets wet it gets very very sticky so it doesn't really go anywhere however when we had the deluge of rain this past winter they did get a little bit of washout so the client just took some 3 8 inch gravel and put it in the dip or the dent and we liked the way it looked so we decided to just let it ride This, this area here, we had a, this little, this cactus was about this big last year. We planted it right there and right, you know, we've got this kaleidoscope mangave and the poor thing was just so sad and overshadowed. I mean, even the orgialis is looking terrific over here, the copper spoons. So I ran some fire glass through this area just to kind of give this cactus an opportunity to shine. We have pockets of tapestry in the front yard, just pockets. It's kind of a combo of statement plants, specimens, and tapestry. But the real, I think, showstopper is Greg's dry stream bed. out of the side of a mountain. So gorgeous.
We've got more driftwood from seafoam driftwood out here in the front yard and more of those fantastic blue cactus. Then our barrel colony, we've got more than a dozen barrel cactus rain, running all the way from here all the way down to the curb. Look at this euphorbia snowflake. Woo, that's pretty. Now you can see that this agave is getting ready to bloom. And that means that she will die. This is a monocarpic plant. It will bloom and it will die. But she's also got some pups. So once we take her out, we should be able to plant her babies in her place and continue on with the life cycle. This is a Euphorbia balsamifolia. I laced it out when we came uh, back up here to do the phase three cactus garden because it was just a little dense and you couldn't really see the stream bed from the street. So I just made some judicious cuts and kind of bonsai it. So don't be afraid to get in there and bonsai your plants um, when, when it's called for. Just remember when you work with euphorbias, they have that, that sap that's toxic if you get it in your orifices. So be careful. Here's some more of that euphorbia that I planted in the backyard, the anti-syphilitica. You can kind of see it after a year of growth. You know, it stays clumpy and small and low and just really sets off these cactus so beautifully. I've mentioned to you before, with Portolacaria afrovirigata, this can be clipped and snipped the traditional way. Just give this plant a haircut when it starts to run amok. And speaking of running amok, look at the succulent fountain in this, uh, in this Senecio string of bananas has fallen over and it's just, it's rooted itself right into the rock. So we're just gonna let it ride. This is aloe granadiensis one of my favorite clumping aloes. It stays a real limey kind of green. Um, it's just a really spectacular color and very, very prolific. So we'll start pulling pups off of this plant probably in about a year and working them out into other areas of the garden. Check out the crested Aonium sunburst. How magnificent is this plant? It's got, I don't know, probably a dozen crests on it. Just happy, happy, happy out here in this Tustin front yard. Then here's some of the Aeonium, some more Aeonium silk. Aeonium Zortkopf, Aeonium silk. And it looks like the silk, part of it has bloomed out. So when this is all done, we'll just cut this down below the rosettes and you'll never know. So this has still got a lot of life in it, despite the fact that mama bloomed out. You can see more of the bloom out over here, but we still have a lot of viable plant material. So this will go for another couple of years probably before we lose them all together. So I hope you've enjoyed this trip down memory lane. Again, once again, this garden started out about two and a half years ago with phase one, then we waited a year, we did phase two, and then this trip, phase three, the cactus diorama. We've got a couple more phases to go this is going to be, and frankly already is, a destination garden. It is the most spectacular place, and I really wish you all could see it in person. Reporting from Tustin for Team DFS, this is Laura Eubanks with your grand reveal and your succulent tip of the day.